Greetings fellow audiences, in this video, you will be presented with the virtual exhibition tours of our SGI artists. The artworks in the exhibition are a reflection of the art making journey of the 12 creative individuals in our class. The exhibitions were curated by the artists themselves and put together over a short 3 day period, the fastest ever in our records. So, grab your snacks, sit back, relax and enjoy the show. The virtual tours will be shown in the following sequence, starting with the HL students. Gillian's works themed, Talk to me instead about the culture. Lucius's works on human connection. Nicholas's works on sensation and cessation. Ruben's works on civilization, hierarchy and power. Shihan's works on liminal spaces. Valerie's works on inequality and Zhang Rei's works on identity. And then there will be the SL students. Benjamin's works on passages of time, Alin's works on living through play, Isabel's works on connection, Karen's works on biculturalism, and last but not least, Natalie's works on memories and tradition. Enjoy the show! Hey, hi, so my exhibition is centered around the theme of culture and it's split into two series. So the first series is ex where I explore Chinese culture and the importance of having a culture as part of our identity. So in the first piece titled A Phone Call Away, I explore the importance of having a Chinese language and how the language is tied to this part of our culture and our heritage. In the second piece called Reflection, I explore how the, the importance of looking into ourselves to be able to identify and recognize and understand this part of our, our, our identity. In the third piece titled Culture Climb, I explore how culture encompasses many parts of our lives and it's very important to be able to hang on and uh, be, still have that connection between our culture. In the, in the fourth piece that I did titled Fitted Fragments, the pieces are all trying to reconnect together because it shows the act of how even though we may feel that we are very separated from this part of ourselves, we may we still have that that part that's still connected like deep inside. Okay. So next my series the second series is um titled What Grounds Us and I explore Singapore culture. So the first piece I is called Dining Room Lessons. So this is a very familiar scene of our Singaporean lives where we do lessons like maybe in the dining room and the patterns are all everywhere and it's a very overwhelming view. So in this piece called Come Sit With Us, I explore the spaces in our Singapore community and how like the importance of having these shared and common areas to be able to foster that community spirit and that part of our Singapore culture. So as you can see, like I decorated the little corridors to show that in community, it's important that uh, it's comprised of many different individuals. Okay, so in this piece called From Our Windows, I explore how Singapore's culture is not... It's, it's like a mixture of many different, like, different uh, cultures from different races and religions, and how it's more like, like Singapore is like a melting pot. Okay, so in my last piece, called Invisible Strings, I explore the concept of how it's important to have a culture and a community to be able to get through like tough times. Thank you! Hello everyone, my, I'm Lucius and my exhibition is on, about the theme of human connection. So I split my theme into three parts, technology, elderly and our connection with the mentally ill. So my very first studio is an emojis um, series. So I want um, this series is about the way that we, we communicate with people online and how it is um, in a way that we are unable to read other people's facial expressions or body language, which may result in a further disconnection since we are unable to really um, express ourselves clearly. And these emojis are actually appearing from this phone hand structure. So this, stu this specific studio is, um, tackles the issue of um, selfies online. But I wanted to question to where exactly these selfies um, bring us. Okay, so um, my next two studios, is this QR code studio and this animation studio. So this QR code studio actually specifically um, leads on to my elderly series. So this is done inspired by the COVID-19 crisis. I wanted to express how um, the elderly during the COVID crisis are unable to escape with, the, with other people into the digital web and hence are disconnected in the real world. However, I also wanted to show through this one, um, through this animation that even online, we face challenges in terms of our connection with people. I want to show the cyclical nature of searching for um, intimacy, but whether it is really uh, whether we are really able to do so in the end. So now this studio 
it is about memories. It uses the um, a digital cloud to express the importance of shared memories in terms of connection and how it works. Um, how it works online now. So I use many motifs like the telephone motif in these two studios. The telephone symbol as a symbol of connection. I also explored um, ideas of um, autonomy and, and death in this studio as well, and how it impacts our, the, dis the disconnection of the elderly. And lastly, is my um, series about the mentally ill. So in terms of our connection with the mentally ill. So this studio, so I wanted to explore the difficulties in trying to connect with mentally ill for a caregiver. And this last one is about the many choices that we can make while when we have a friendship or companionship with a mentally ill person. Thank you. Welcome to my show about sensation and cessation, or life and death. So I broke up my show into three separate acts. Uh, the first being life, the second being destiny, and the third being death. So in my act of life, I have three pieces. Firstly, we have Viamus Morian S which is Let Us Live Since We Must Die. It talks about how living is more than just existing and how it's a conscious effort made by everyone. In my work, Dun Spiro Spera, or While I Breathe, I Hope, it's about how hope and life are basically interchangeable. And although we can't see one at the moment, there is still life, which indicates the presence of hope. Lastly, we have Sig Vita S, or Such Is Life. And it, this interactive piece actually talks about the messiness of our emotions. In my second act of destiny, I look at life from a more macroscopic perspective. So this piece, the Viram Natura, or on the, na on the nature of things, it looks at how before we are conceived and after we die, it's basically the same thing, and we shouldn't be afraid of death. In this piece, which is reminiscent of a aerial uh, view of a roller coaster, it talks about how God would see our lives as almost a two-dimensional plane, but every decision that and thing that happens to us happens for a reason, and it's all part of God's plan. In my third act of death, I approach death from three different perspectives. A universal perspective, as seen from my piece, Tempus Vincent Omnis, um, my uh, piece on culture, which is Momenta Mori, and my last piece on Ave Aquas Valley, or Hail and Farewell. In my piece, Momenta Mori, I look at how our perceptions of an objective thing, such as a number four, can be perceived differently because of our cultural and language lenses. Um, in my last piece, Ave Aquas Valley, it is actually a tribute to my late grandfather who passed away recently. The shape is almost reminiscent of a magnetic field, which represents how like magnetic fields are electric fields from a different frame of reference, so too maybe death is something else from a different plane of existence. Thank you, that's all. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to my exhibition. Throughout my body of works, I tried to explore um, power and hierarchy in society. So uh, this over here is called Playground. It's an installation piece made out of um, 3D printed blocks. Uh, I tried to explore um, societal structures from the viewpoint of a child where everything is uh, chaotic and confusing. So this is uh, Penrose's Gambit. It is a 3D model that I printed out and uh, paper cut. It is a representation of how power is a social construct and uh, how people's uh, perspective of power depends on how they see themselves in society. This is Hive Inc. It was the first um, artwork that I ever made and it's a board game uh, set in an office. Uh, it's a playable board game and I tried to emphasize the imbalance of power in the workplace through this game. Uh, this is Queendom. It is one of my last pieces. It is a 3D model and in this piece I wanted to explore um, female empowerment and how um, women fight back against a system that oppresses them. This is Checkmate. It is a chessboard made out of red thread. I wanted to explore um, the idea of red thread as a cultural symbol in Asian uh, societies. This is I Speak Therefore I Am, and it's a paper, um, it's a typography piece that I printed onto paper. It represents the power that uh, typography has over the way we communicate and how it has evolved and um, matured over the span of many years. This is Overseer. It is a photography piece that I edited in Photoshop. It is a representation of mass surveillance in society. This is Unplugged. 
It is a mixed media poster and it is enabled by an augmented reality filter. I wanted to discuss the implications of technology and uh, our reliance on um, the digital world. Thank you. My exhibition focuses on liminal spaces, which are traditional spaces or periods. It is in this liminal state that things are lost, like how one might lose personal belongings when moving houses. Loss is inevitable when transition occurs. The exhibition is divided into three sections, each exploring a different kind of liminal space, and the final work that acts as my own self-reflection of the issue. The first section consists of three artworks, White Only, I Was, and Values. These pieces look at the liminal space between our thoughts and the words we say. I use footwear to represent societal standards and how these standards inhibit us from expressing ourselves. The next section includes three more artworks, Void, Stop u -turn, and 105 Arriving. These pieces look at the physical liminal space and how we neglect the physical space uh, and structures around us. In a hyper-efficient society like Singapore's, we are always looking for ways to maximise our time, to go from start to end as quickly as possible, forsaking many interesting places around us. The third section consists of two pieces, a series of tubes and screaming head. These two works explore a more contemporary form of liminality, the digital realm. The internet is a platform which many post photos or texts on. However, this is unlikely the end of the process, as the true destination would be the viewers of said post. This makes the internet a liminal space for these posts to travel from one person to another. My last piece is my own reflection of liminality as a whole, Lazy River. It explores what I find extremely endearing about liminal spaces, the, en the endless possibilities that can come from it, and that we should use these periods as a momentary respite from the never-ending ones of life. Uh, hi, I'm Valerie and today I'm going to show you and my exhibition. So my theme is actually inequality and I wanted to discuss this issue in a more approachable and amicable way through all my art pieces. So I started off with the school context where I wanted to discuss um, the inequalities faced by students. So I started off with the socio-economic divide where it was um, seen mostly during the HBL period. And after that, I moved on towards um, the problems and the emotions and struggles faced by students with learning disabilities. This was actually inspired by my sister who struggles with um, dyscalculia and I wanted to bring awareness to um, these students who um, battle with these hidden um, difficulties through um, these three pieces over here. Um, moving on, I wanted to talk about and go and uh, discuss more about the wider Singaporean context where I wanted to critique the idea of social hierarchy and subvert the ideas of um, common stereotypes through the use of irony in these two pieces. Well, um, um, after that, I wanted to move forward to show like a progress where we can work towards a more harmonious society, which is where this piece comes in, where um, it shows a progression from this section of my exhibition to this section over here. And next we have um, this piece over here, which is called Perfect on Paper, where I wanted to show a utopian city where it reached like um, societal perfection. Even though now it's only um, perfect on paper, it's uh, an ideal that we should all progress towards. And lastly, I wanted to end off my entire exhibition with uh, leaving with the audience like a call to action, which is a literal phone over here. So I wanted to discuss the idea of the importance of conversation where we need to listen to others' opinions and also take the time to share our personal opinions to create this um, un mutual understanding to form our more coherent and more harmonious society. And that is my exhibition. Thank you. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Zhang Rui. So the overarching theme of my art exhibition is identity. Starting with a central piece called Bursting at the Theme, it talks about my personal journey about how beauty standards in the society become very pressurizing and constraining for females. Uh, starting from this piece, the entire exhibition is split into two parts. Uh, the left part is more about personal and emotional identity, and the right part is more about cultural identity. So the piece Huo Shui Trouble and the painting Touch Me Not, they both talk about how the misogynistic perceptions about women carried in words uh, cause a, uh, brings about trauma for a woman. And this piece called Extensions of Desperation, it talks about how um, a young spirit yearns for freedom uh, when it's trapped under physical constraints represented by the room. And 
this piece called Breaking Down 2, it talks about how the chaos when we transition between different life stages brings about self-destruction represented by the hand scratching through the head. Okay, moving on. Uh, the watercolor painting The Irrevocable, it talks about the negative impacts of globalization and how cultural homogenization brings about detrimental effect to the cultural diversity in the world. And this piece called The Confluence, in contrast, it talks about the positive impacts of globalization and how Eastern and Western culture come together to bring about a new cultural form. And this painting is called Breaking Down One. It depicts the process of uh, urbanization in China. And this piece is called Dreamy. It talks about my own cultural root and shows the traditional Chinese architectures from my hometown. Yes, that's it for my exhibition. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Hi, guys. Welcome to my exhibition. My art theme is Passages of Time, and I have a a total of six studios, each representing a certain period of time in my life where either I developed or society developed as a whole. So let's just start with this piece here. This piece was taken using the fast shutter speed um, phot photography technique where um, it, the pictures were captured in milliseconds so that I can freeze rain li literally in time. Whereas the next piece here uses a technique of long exposure photography where I captured light streaks and painted with lights in my room to show a progression of my mind state during the JC period. The next one, as you can see here, this cycle that is supposed to look like a clock is representative of a day in the life of a person who is attached to, addicted to, and not attached to technology. The next one here, this piece um, through the looking glass is uh, it's supposed to be representative of this, the circuit breaker period where everyone was locked at home and had nothing to do. So we had to just look out, look out of our windows and, and observe the surroundings. And then we start to notice little things that we usually don't notice. And then this centerpiece here, there is a, a paper cut sculpture of an uh, installation of a watch. Um, the construct of time is supposed to be representative of my four years of art making making journey in SJI, showing how fragmented in the individual fragmented pieces eventually piece up to one perfect piece. And last but not least, this film strip looking um, piece, Stream of Memories here, uh, is a compilation of memories of three generations, myself, my parents, and my grandparents' memories all in one piece, where the multiple generations of memories intertwine and interlink showing how the past can link all the way into the future. So each piece here is a piece of time. So we have everything from milliseconds all the way to seconds, to days, to months, to years, and from past all the way into the future, into infinity. Thank you. Hi, welcome to my exhibition. So the theme of my exhibition is understanding life through play. And um, so in each work, I incorporated an element of a game or a toy, and most of them center around trying to understand how our experience affects our perception of the world. So my first work is about how seeing the world through somebody else's eyes or understanding somebody else's perspective helps us gain empathy. And I included the element of a game or a toy in the form of a kaleidoscope. Um, my next one was about how our emotions are, play a very, a very big role in how we perceive things. And so in a society where we don't really talk about our feelings, I wanted to create a game that allowed us the space and the time to process them. So this work was about sensory processing disorder and how it affects people's experience of the world. Moving on from there, um, I wanted to look at how people's experiences are also affected by like their own mind. And in this case, it was about how children are often, like we pride the imagination of children, but when they start school, we don't see it as something that's as important. And so I wanted to create this work to portray the struggle of focusing for a child who's imaginative. Later on, um, I was moving to more general ideas. And in this piece, it was about how our perception of time is shaped by how much we have lived and how much time we have left. 
And finally, this one was my favorite piece, but it was about how our entire experience and identity is shaped by all the things we've lived through before. So I got people to write about their childhood memories and I collected them to form this big like mobile of memories that form our identity. Okay, yeah, thank you. Hi, I'm Isabel Liu. Welcome to my exhibition. My main theme of, for my works is connection and it's divided into two series. The first series uh, focuses on connection to culture from a personal lens. My first work over here is inspired by Da Vinci's Last Supper. It depicts the traditional Chinese reunion dinner with a twist. That is because everyone's on their phones and this creates a feeling of isolation and disconnect from both each other as well as the elders of the family. My next work focuses on the uh, connection I am sharing with my grandmother and the work is inspired by Michelangelo's creation of Anna. The distance between the hands is representation of the generational gap between us and it's bridged by the pattern that is traveling from her hand to my hand. Next, we move on to the second series which focuses on connection from a broader perspective. This work um, focuses on the interconnectedness of the ecological system. Next, moving on to this work, I wanted to capture the COVID-19 moments and the new normal that we now have to live with in a fresh angle and perspective. I wanted to capture the things that we normally would pass by in our daily lives without a, sec a second thought or a second look. Now moving on to the last work of my exhibition. This piece was inspired by um, my old family photo albums. So the aim of this work is to juxtapose past and present using pictures and places that are still around in Singapore, but they may not be around in the future. And um, I wanted to present them in a photo set to uh, juxtapose past and present. Hello, I'm Karen. Welcome to my exhibit. Uh, my, exhi my exhibit is about my cultural identity as a half Japanese and half Singaporean. Yeah. So firstly, uh, this is Tadaima or I'm home. This studio is about how home, while it's a tangible physical space, is shaped by intangible emotional connection. Yeah, and moving on, uh, this is Hiroshima which depicts a mushroom cloud, a reference to the Hiroshima bombing. It's a made of school desks. Uh, this work is about um, the failure of both the Japanese and Singaporean education system in telling the, the opposer's side of the story in World War II. Yeah. And next, uh, we have Illuminance, which is about my initial impression of Singapore's urban jungle. Uh, when I first moved to Singapore from the suburbs of Japan, I was overwhelmed by the number of high-rises there were. The standardized architecture made it uh, very indistinguishable that there were homes in these buildings. This is why I felt the city came to life at night when windows lit up and each of them were representative of an individual life. Yeah, moving on. Uh, this is 1980. Uh, to the left is the Ise Jingu and to the right is the HDB flat. Uh, the Ise Jingu is a Shinto shrine that is traditionally rebuilt every two decades. Uh, the HDB flat is a 99-year leasehold property that can never be truly owned forever. Both of these places are symbols of impermanence. I also wanted to allude to this impermanence visually with the translucency of not just the medium chasing paper, but also the, of the buildings themselves. Yeah. Okay, and lastly, uh, this is transients. Uh, Transients depicts my perspective at the early stages of my migration from Japan to Singapore, when I saw Singapore's reality and Japan as memory. Here at the congruence of the composition of the Singaporean Stephen Station contrasts this, this organized one of the Japanese Hakuraku Station, which reflects the respective objectivity and subjectivity of reality and memory. Yeah, that's my exhibit. Thank you. Hello guys, so my, the whole theme of my exhibition is about memories and traditions. Both for this first work is about the forgotten beadwork stitching in Peranakan culture. And this is supposed to allude to the clouds fading away. And each ring is supposed to represent like the beadworks whereby you stitch in and out. 
And then for this second work that I have here, it's supposed to showcase about the importance of oral histories as a way to remember our cultures and traditions. So this also alludes to my Pranakan culture, whereby it's supposed to represent my family sharing stories of the past and present. For my third work here, it's supposed to emphasize the matriarchal household in the Pranakan families, whereby the mother is the queen of the household. And this is also like, this also can symbolize like she's the queen of the kitchen, as traditionally, um, Pranakan women are supposed to have great cooking skills. So for my fourth work, it's also about the Pranakan culture, but it showcases the growing status of the women as they mature. So firstly, this is before marriage. And for the second one, it's supposed to be like when their mother-in-laws have to like so-called grade them on their cooking skills and their sewing skills. So this emphasizes the cooking part. And for the last one, it showcases like how once they are married to the family, um, they have the highest power, so they have control of everything that happens in the house. So for my fifth work here, it's about the idea of migration, whereby it showcases the integration of different cultures in one place. It's supposed to highlight like um, how all the cultures, all the different cultures and traditions integrate into each other in one country. And for my last work here, it also um, extends on the idea of migration, but this is like in the long term, whereby um, when we move to a different country, we often change our identity due to societal pressures. Okay, thank you.